let's pretend this is a brand new module uh, and I'm going to start creating my transaction. So the first thing I need to do is uh, well, set up my network. Uh, so we have two isolated Ethernet ports. Uh, they Actually, they have to be on separate subnets. So you can either run everything through one single port or if you want to segregate your database network from the plant network, you can use them uh, completely uh, independently. Uh, so fairly standard network setup. Uh, you can use DNS if you want to talk to the database by name and so on. Uh, fixed IP, DHCP. Uh, one interesting thing is that we have some diagnostics uh, running on the module. So directly from the module, I, I can make I can make sure that I can talk to my database server. Um, so if there's any firewall in between or things like that preventing the communication, I can troubleshoot that from from here. So the commands are going out from the module itself. And then the the un, only other thing that I would need to set up is my uh, my time uh, because we we can timestamp the data when it when the transaction fires on the module. Uh, so we want to make sure that the clock of the team manager is synchronized with a, a proper time server. So that can either be uh, an NTP server running on my computer network like it's set up right now. In which case I can also pass that time down to the PLCs on the network as the destination, or I could do the other way around and uh, read the time from my automation device. So in this case, my PLC would be the time source, and I'm going to synchronize to that. So right now, I'm, I'm synchronizing to my uh, computer network, and that's pretty much it. Uh, from here, I can go into projects. Uh, let me stop this one and create a new one. So like I said, let's pretend this is a brand new module. Um, so I'm going to create a blank project, and if I open that project, then I go in the project editor side of the of the software. So from here, uh, there are a few things that are uh, automated for you. So for instance, I've got that automation uh, adapter here, and if I open that up, the module is going to actually browse my chassis, uh, find what's in there. So I've got my uh, control logic processor in slot zero. Uh, I could go on the network either using the well, the Logix network cards and go and uh, talk to a like a separate module on the network. So that could be a Compact Logix, that could be an older uh, PLC from Rockwell, um, and so on. Or I can even uh, talk to non-Rockwell PLCs, talk to an S7 or some Modbus TCP device directly from here. So right on there, uh, the modules found that I got my control logics here. And without setting up anything in the PLC itself, I can go and open the tag list from that PLC. So over the backplane, we're going to query the, the PLC for the tag list. And we get access to everything that's available there. So global, program level, we can see UDTs, and so on. So everything is going to be available now. And you can see by default, all the tags are read-only. So if I have the right uh, login to to do my configuration, I can also make those tags writable. So I can go back and if I go and fetch a recipe, for instance, in my database, I can go back and write that in my uh, in my PLC. So I've got the link now uh, set up to the, to the PLC. I can go and create a new adapter to my database. So I only need a few things from uh, IT to connect to my database, the IP or the name of the host, the name of that database, and then a username and password to talk to it. Uh, same thing as the PLC, so my connection is correct to my database. I can go and enumerate that database. So the module is going to query the database for what's available. So for my user EATM, I can see uh, a few tables and stored procedure and everything that I can access. So I can select them, and now they're going to be available for my um, for my configuration. So from here, I can create my message path. This is the actual transaction. Uh, so you can see we can access directly tables, uh, either to store data, so insert or update data directly into a table. We can do select and go get data from that table and send it down to the PLC. Or we can actually call the stored procedure, in which case it's well, the, the, you send data the, the, uh, whichever way you want. So we can start with a, a simple insert. Uh, so in my transaction, I've, have, I've got three uh, parts. First one is the trigger. So this is going to be when do I want that transaction to fire? Uh, do I want it periodically? Do I want it based on an event? 
uh, and so on. We'll see in more details. The map is going to be mapping the PLC tags I want to collect and where do I want to store them in my database. And then the endpoint is well, the database I want to send that data to. So we can go and start creating that trigger. Uh, so we have actually three types of triggers. So we have periodic, in which case it's going to fire uh, like every second here, uh, and and just fire my transaction. Uh, scheduled is a similar thing, but a bit more detailed. So I could create a, a schedule like every day at 8 in the morning or something. I want to capture a snapshot of my stock level or something. So I can create it very uh, easily like that. And the third one is event, um, in which case the transaction is actually driven by the PLC. So uh, the good thing about it is that it's 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 properly event driven. It's the PLC that has to send an explicit message to the module to generate the transaction. Uh, uh, the bad side of it is that it requires that you program that message and potential errors and retries in the PLC. So the next best thing that we have available is using that same periodic event I talked about from the beginning. Uh, you can add a condition. So you can actually, for example, monitor a tag in the PLC. Uh, and and I'm going to monitor that tag in, in this case every second, but I could go down to 250 milliseconds. And if that tag changes or we have a whole set of condition becomes equal to something or greater than something, I can compare it to something else, that's going to be my triggering event. So this is sort of event-based. And if your uh, process is well, slower than that 250 millisecond scan time, uh, this is, I think, good enough and that uh, prevents you from having to write anything in the PLC itself and the modules because it's going to manage the transaction. So I can now drag and drop my trigger onto my transaction. I can give that a name actually as well. Then the map is going to be, like I said, uh, in this case, my input is going to be my PLC. So I've got my PLC tags here. And the output is going to be a table in my database. So for each table, the module is going to find what's, what's the column name, what's the data type expected, and so on. And if I look at that table that I emptied earlier, I can just drag and drop the table definition here and go and create my mapping. So I want to collect those tags from the PLC, the pass count, the uh, line number, and so on. So I can create my transaction like this. Um, and I mentioned timestamping before, so we have some macros here, and I can just drag and drop that timestamp value here. That's going to be when the when the transaction fires. So even if there's delays later on, we buffer the the transaction somewhere, or we can't talk to the database and so on. That timestamp is still going to be when it actually fired in the module. And then uh, I can add some constants here to identify my data or something. And from here, either I can connect those uh, PLC tags on the left-hand side to the columns in my database, or we have some uh, function block toolbox where you can do some manipulation on the data. So we have a, a fairly extensive set of, uh, of function blocks you can use, and it's the same thing. You just drag and drop them onto the, uh, onto the map and just connect them uh, together or something like that. So if you want to do some manipulation of the data before you send it to the database. You can do it either in the module or in the database itself. For now, I'm just going to connect all the facing items using that button, and that's going to be my map. If I can close that. Same thing as before, drag my map onto my transaction. And then the endpoint is pointing to that database that I set up before, I could actually create multiple endpoints with various configuration, uh, individual configuration. So for instance, for this one, let's say I want to enable the store and forward. Uh, this is a buffer. We have up to 2 gig of flash memory on board the module where we're going to buffer all the transaction if the, the database is not available. So a network issue, database being patched and restarted, something like that. So we're going to make sure that we don't lose those transactions and buffer them on the module and resend them automatically. 
Uh, same thing here, I could set up the failover. If I've got another alternate database that I can talk to, the module can be set up to uh, automatically fail to the second one after three attempts. Then you can set up uh, automatic recovery and so on. So just, just a matter of checking the, the checkbox, and that's pretty much it. The module takes care of the rest. So I have my endpoint here and drag it to my transaction. So now I'm done, I've got my transaction set up. I can go and start uh, the pieces that I created. So my endpoint, my trigger, my project. And that's it, it's all running now. So I could, from now on, disconnect my uh, configuration software and the module is just gonna execute those transactions. So if I look back at that status window that I showed in the beginning, so we can see here, I'm already sending, I've got, I've got nine messages successful that went into uh, the database. And if we go back and look at the database itself, we can see I've got all my uh, data coming in from my PLC with the timestamp. It is actually 12.30 here uh, and so on. So fairly fairly simple to uh, to set up, really designed for the, the PLC guy. You don't need to write any uh, SQL commands. You can, you can have a look at it in the module itself. It's gonna tell you what uh, what is the SQL that's uh, actually generated by the module, but you don't have to have any knowledge on that. It's really fairly intuitive for, for someone used to uh, programming the PLCs.